Picture coming home from school, turning on the TV, and seeing your math teacher getting arrested. That's what happened to students at Bonita High School in Laverne, California in 2006. It all started on January 7th of that year when math teacher Walter Edward Bass began chatting online with a girl who said she was 12. The high school educator made it clear what he wanted from the child with graphic detail. Then, just one day after starting the chat, Walter Bass drove to the girl's house in Riverside, California. While it wasn't seen on TV, Walter actually sat in his car for a while after arriving at the house, as if he was deciding if he was going to go through with it. Bapst ultimately decided to pull his wedding ring off, slide it into his pocket, and go inside the home. He soon found out there was no 12-year-old girl, and instead, it was an investigation being run by Dateline NBC. While being questioned by the host, Chris Hansen, the realization of what was about to happen to Walter's life set in. Uh, no, I need you to sit down, please. I need you to just arrest me and take me to jail and, and execute me. I need me. to talk to you first. I'm in education. You're in education? Mm -hmm. What grade do you teach? High school. Well, why did you come here, though? Help me to understand. Because I'm a sick son of a... I've never done anything with anybody except my wife. Ever. After leaving the house, the math teacher was arrested by the police. Once in custody, Babs used his right to remain silent and didn't speak to detectives. He faced two felony charges and a $25,000 bond, which he paid. This happened on a Saturday, and just two days later, Walter Bass returned to the classroom on Monday morning. The footage from To Catch a Predator wouldn't air for a few weeks, and nobody had contacted the school to tell him about Walter Babs' arrest. Because of this, Walter ended up teaching for an entire week after getting caught. In fact, it wasn't until Walter's own lawyer contacted the school on January 13th, 2006, that school officials found out. However, police would reach out not long after. Dateline NBC interviewed some of Walter Babs' students who made some alarming claims. He has looked at my butt or looked down our shirts. Other students said similar things. However, the school never received any complaints about Walter Babs, and there wasn't any evidence Walter did something inappropriate while on the job. Regardless, the school held a meeting, and Walter Babs was placed on unpaid administrative leave. Later on, Babs would also have his teaching credential revoked by the state of California. However, these were the least of Walter's problems. Soon after the arrest, police found over 200 pictures and videos of children on Babs' computers, and they weren't of his son or daughter. For the next year, the former math teacher would wait as his case got worked through the court system. Since he was on unpaid leave, Walter had to find other work. In June 2006, he was hired as a quality control supervisor for a company that repaired transportation vehicles called Complete Coach Works. Despite starting a new career, Walter Babs ended up pleading guilty to the charges stemming from To Catch a Predator. He was convicted on February 2nd, 2007 and got one year in jail, five years of extended probation, and lifetime status as an offender. Additionally, Walter Babs was not allowed to be around children unsupervised and was not allowed to take a job that involved kids. This meant Mr. Babs' days as a teacher were completely over. Walter Babs ended up not spending a full year in jail, being released later in 2007. Once he was a free man again, Babs continued working for the transportation company in the same position. Walter stayed at that job for about four years until June 2011. It's unlikely that Walter Babs got fired or anything because he ended up moving to the lakeside city of Lake Stevens, Washington. There he worked in the nearby city of Everett as an aircraft mechanic for a company called Vector Solutions. Walter specifically restored old planes, which was similar to the work he was doing in California. On top of that, Walter got a part-time job as a prototype machinist at a medical device company in Bothell, Washington, less than half an hour from Everett. While most men on To Catch a Predator ended up having worse careers after being arrested, that doesn't appear to be the case for Walter Babs. He was definitely making more money than he was as a high school teacher, even though he was on the registry. A few reasons why Walter was able to land on his feet after such a public arrest is because he hadn't only been a teacher. Prior to To Catch a Predator, Babs worked as a mechanical assembly group leader in Tampa, Florida, and as an aircraft mechanic in Redlands, California. He was also well-educated, with a degree in political science and government, as well as a Bachelor of Education degree. Walter even has a life outside of work. He makes model aircrafts and is clearly a big World War II history buff. Babs blogs about his model creations, and a To Catch a Predator fan even commented on one of Walter's posts. The fan pretended to be Lauren Arnold, Armstrong, another infamous man caught on TCAP, but Walter didn't seem to catch on. In February 2018, Walter moved back to Riverside, California and returned to his previous employer, Complete Coach Works. He still works there today as a manager. As for Walter Babs' personal life, looking through all the public records show that his wife stayed with them through everything and they're still married today. Walter's son and daughter are in their 20s now and not much is known about his relationship with them. But considering he's still with his wife, I assume Babs remains close with his children. Walter Babst was able to turn his life around after To Catch a Predator. Jeff Stacy, on the other hand, tried, but ultimately couldn't. Watch this video to see what happened to the Mickey Mouse Predator.